Australia's first atheist prime minister is having trouble keeping radical members of her coalition government in line. The Green Party's sole representative in Parliament is pushing to garner support for gay marriage. He also wants to pass federal laws legalizing euthanasia. Prime Minister Gillard wants to put off debate on those issues for at least another year so she can strengthen her weak coalition. She fears the opposition party led by Tony Abbott will use divisions over social issues to bring down her government. Many Australian Christians certainly were disappointed that Tony Abbott and his opposition party were unable to form a government. Labor was, and they hold a one-seat advantage in the parliament. Yet Christians are optimistic that a more pro-family conservative agenda can move forward. Concerned citizens put together the Canberra Declaration to guide elected leaders on the values important to them. Bill Muhlenberg is a political analyst and one of its authors. He says legislating the Declaration's pro-family, pro-life agenda may prove difficult because of the Labor Green Party coalition. The very antithesis, in fact, of uh, what we were arguing for in the Canberra Declaration, instead of pro-life, we have a government that's pushing a pro-death agenda. It's from womb to the tomb, it's under assault. Uh, we have a very cavalier view of human life and we're really become a culture of death. Muhlenberg and many others believe the Australian government has gone too far in limiting Christian rights. Jim Wretch is among them. He faithfully serves his church by playing in the band. Jim's former wife was awarded custody of their five children after she left him for another man. Jim longs to bring the children to church. More than eight months have passed since he last saw them. He's disappointed that the court rejected his request for custody on Sundays. It's very much anti-God court system here. If you would think, even if this was 20 or 30 years ago, you would think it'd be a, a bonus if a father wanted to take his children to church, but you know they want to embrace other religions and other faiths. And in, in Australia, the Muslim faith is growing, but it's still a minority. But a lot of laws are tended to favour the Muslims. And if I was to be a Muslim and go to the courts and say I want to take, uh, I want to take my children to the mosque, I'm sure they would have granted that. Pastor Danny Nalaya of Catch the Fire Ministries knows the Australian court system all too well. He fought a five-year legal battle over charges that he vilified Muslims. Eventually, he was declared not guilty of inciting hatred against them. Nalaya suggests change will come to his country when more Christians fall to their knees. He says an anticipated drought was averted when Aussies prayed for rain. We broke the curse over the nation. We repented and prayed and said, Lord, give us rain. That rain which started in October last year has not stopped up to date. There has been so much rainfall. I was speaking to farmers. They brought it to my attention that Victoria is going to have the greatest bumper harvest, the best in the world. Australian Christians have also held prayer meetings in their parliament building. and They've seen lives transformed throughout the country. When we decided to do this prayer gathering on Mount Ainsley, uh, the witches, the warlocks, and the Satanists got very upset because that's their capital. They didn't want us to come. They personally told, sent me messages saying, if you come, we'll attack you. But the Lord protected us. Ultimately, halfway through, these people were asking us, do you really love us? Because we stood our ground, but we love them. And the great exciting news is four months, three months later, the Satanist leader who came to attack me, I had the great opportunity of leading him to the Lord Jesus. And four months later, I was in his house in Canberra with my hands around his shoulder as brothers in Christ. Bill Muhlenberg says Australian Christians need to be stirred to action. He draws attention to current issues on his blog site, Culture Watch. It's really a, a means to equip the church primarily, inform them, alert them, encourage them to get out and make a difference. We just do things faithfully and let God uh, bring in the results. Gary Lane, CBN News, Sydney.